last few lectures uh, we talked about what we mean by an argument and uh, how to identify an argument that means recognizing an argument uh, uh, especially when uh, what we have said was uh, this that whenever you find some kind of uh, indicator words for premises or indicator words for the conclusion then we are saying that there seems to be some kind of argument present in a given English language passage. So identifying uh, or recognizing the argument is the most important thing for a logician. So once he identifies an argument then he can, he can criticize or he can evaluate these arguments what type of argument it is etc. So in this lecture what we would be doing is simply this that uh, once we identified the argument and then once we have distinguished it from non arguments, non arguments in the sense that uh, reports, warnings, piece of advice, explanations, expositions, illustrations etc. Once you uh, extract from these things once we, have, once we have an argument then the immediate question that comes to us is what type of argument it is. So usually in logic we study two different kinds of arguments so one is inductive argument another one is deductive argument. So this lecture will be fo we will be focusing our attention on deductive arguments and then what are the characteristics of a deductive argument where do you come across these deductive arguments uh, in what sense they are different from the other kind of argument which we are talking about that is the inductive argument. So in what sense these two are different and all. So the first and primary thing which we need to learn in any uh, logic course is the distinction between the deduction and induction. So far we have what we have done is like this. So we what we have said is this that non inferential passages are non arguments whereas inferential passages are uh, whenever you find some kind of inferential claim in a given passage then we are saying that there is some kind of argument present in the given passage. So we will we will straight away move into the two different types of arguments uh, one is uh, inductive argument another one is deductive argument. So where do we find this inductive and deductive kinds of arguments. So what is the definition of a deductive argument in any argument consists of premises and conclusion uh, it depends upon uh, on how the premises are leading to the conclusion uh, we have these two different kinds of arguments. So in the case of deductive arguments uh, if the premises are true the conclusion has to be true and all. So it is by virtue of some kind of logical necessity the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. So that means if it if it is a valid kind of argument which I will talk about it a little bit later if you say something is a, a valid argument and all a deductive argument especially when if you have true premises you cannot have a false conclusion if you have a false conclusion then that is called as an invalid kind of argument. So one of the important uh, things which you will observe in the case of uh, deductive arguments is this that the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises it is a kind of some kind of logical necessity. So if the premises are true the conclusion cannot be false. So the link between the premises and the conclusion in the case of deductive argument is strict. So that means if the premises are accepted to be 100 percent true then the conclusion also accept, accepted to be 100 percent true and all there is some kind of absolute certainty involved in deductive kind of arguments. So how to identify uh, that there are deductive arguments in a English language passage that we are looking for. So again uh, there will be some indicator words uh, for identifying the deductive arguments especially uh, when you look at uh, uh, the conclusion part and all in the given argument. So they end with uh, these kinds of phrases necessarily, certainly, definitely etc. And all. So there is some kind of absolute certainty involved in these kinds of arguments deductive arguments. So we find these kinds of arguments basically in mathematic, mathematics uh, etc. So mathematics seek some kind of certainty so usually we find these kinds of arguments in of course in some of the arguments you find it in day to day life but to what extent they will be useful enough we will talk about it little bit later. So if you want to say that a successful deductive argument and these are the arguments in which the conclusion is completely guaranteed by the premises and all. The premises are true the conclusion cannot be false again and again I am saying the same thing. The conclusion must be contained in the premises and all. 
So, it is in this sense that derivative arguments there is nothing new in the conclusion. So, everything that is there in the conclusion is already there in the premises then what is the, what is so great about these deductive arguments and all. So, uh, whatever is there in the premises which is implicit which is made explicit in the conclusions. So, there is nothing uh, no new information uh, which you are going to arrive at uh, in the case of deductive arguments because the conclusion is already present in the premises and which is uh, which is implicit earlier it will become explicit. So, this is the case of uh, deductive arguments let us consider an example then we will talk about what we what are the characteristics of a deductive argument. Suppose if you say uh, that all police chiefs are honest I mean we know that they are not all are anyhow honest and all but for time being assuming that all police chiefs uh, chief of superintendent police etc and all they are all honest assumed to be true. You have to note that in logic you need to have to be actually true and all even if you can assume some of the things to be true then based on your assumptions you will see whether the conclusion follows from that or not. So, all is all police chiefs are honest practically speaking that is not the case anyway. Suppose if you say that Mr. Kapoor is a police chief then it must be the case that Kapoor has to be honest and all there is no way in which Kapoor can be <laughs> dishonest based on our assumptions that all police chiefs are honest is 100 percent true. Mr. Kapoor is a police chief is certainly true that means absolutely true or 100 percent true then uh, it cannot uh, go in any other way than this that Mr. Kapoor has to be honest must be honest. And all. So, the first premise is taken to be an absolute universal generalization without any exception and all. So, in the deductive arguments um, uh, suppose if it begins with all police chiefs are honest and all or if you say all crows are black etcetera that is an universal generalization uh, which is uh, taken for granted that it is taken for granted that there are no exceptions and all. So, it is in this sense the first premise is 100 percent true second premise is 100 percent true then third premise you cannot say that it is 90 percent true or 50 percent true etcetera and all there is no element of degree of truth in the conclusion if you accept the premises to be true then the conclusion must be true. If the premises are true the conclusion cannot be false enough if that is the case it is not a valid kind of argument it is an invalid kind of argument which we are going to talk about little bit later. So, validity tells us what follows what. So, which we will talk about it little bit later when we talk about validity of deductive arguments uh, etc. So, in this example if the two premises are uh, assumed to be absolutely true then the conclusion cannot be false enough. That means you cannot come up with a single counter example in which your premises uh, all police chiefs are honest Mr. Kapoor is a police chief is true then it cannot be the case that you cannot come up with any counter example in which the Kapoor is honest you cannot come across with any instance where uh, you can show that Mr. Kapoor is dishonest and all. So, premises guarantees that the conclusion is true and all there is come some kind of necessity involved in these kinds of arguments and all necessity absolute certainty these are some of the important characteristics of deductive arguments. So, what we mean to say that a deductive argument is valid to say that an argument is deductively valid means that it is logically impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion is false. If you come across a situation where your premises are true and the conclusion is false then it is automatically an invalid kind of argument. So, the set of three statements uh, uh, one of the important uh, requirement is this that the set of three statements should be collectively consistent and all. Consistency in a sense that uh, either you can show that uh, I mean x is the case or x not x is the case and all. So, if you can show both uh, both are the cases x and not x for example, if you obtain uh, if you derive something like it is raining and it is not raining simultaneously then there is something wrong with the argument. And all. So, the given premises are inconsistent and all. if the premises taken together are inconsistent with the negation of the conclusion 
this is another way of putting uh, that a deductive argument is valid or invalid. If the premises taken together are inconsistent with the negation of the conclusion not the conclusion you know the negation of the conclusion then the uh, then also the argument is said to be deductively valid. So this is an example which establishes this particular kind of thing all police chiefs are honest again the same example which we will be taking Mr. Kapoor is a police chief therefore Mr. Kapoor is not honest suppose if you can uh, come across with this kind of conclusion then it is considered to be an invalid kind of argument he has to be honest if he is uh, if he comes under the category of a police chief. So then we will talk about where do you come across induct, uh, deductive arguments little bit later how to identify these deductive arguments in a given language passage uh, English language passage little bit later but we will talk about uh, what we mean by inductive arguments. So these are the two different kinds of arguments that you come across uh, in uh, basically you come across in uh, while you are reading a scientific text or reading some kind of newspaper or something like that. This is a commonly occurring kind of arguments which you come across even in day to day discourse also. In an inductive argument on the other hand compared to the deductive arguments the link between the premises and the conclusion is not strict I mean that means conclusion can probably follow from the premises you know. in the inductive arguments conclusion need not necessarily follow from the premises. So if the premises are true then the conclusion will only be probably true you know. so probability has various connotations and all I will talk about it little bit later when I go into the details of inductive arguments. But here uh, especially to make these two arguments distinct and all on the one hand you have conclusion necessarily follows from the premises there is no way in which uh, if the premises are true the conclusion is false if you subscribe to two things and you have to uh, you will buy two things automatically you will get the other one as free of cost you have to buy the other one also uh, it will be uh, given free of cost you I mean so you cannot uh, give up the uh, conclusion you know. If your premises are accepted to be true, the conclusion has to be must be true in all in the case of deductive arguments. That is not the case in the case of inductive arguments. So the conclusion probably follows from the premises, and one of the criteria is the nature of inferential link between the premises and the conclusion that is going to decide whether it is an inductive or deductive argument. So inductive arguments are based uh, mostly based on probability and inductive arguments are based on statistical uh, data etc and all so the support for an inductive argument is typically given by some kind of uh, empirical evidence or direct observations etc. So here is an example of uh, an inductive argument and we will see in what sense this inductive argument is different from the deductive arguments suppose if you say most swans are white I am not saying all swans are white and all basically you know in our observation uh, you observe that uh, many crows are black etc and all so you observe thousands of crows I mean uh, let us say it is your habit that uh, I mean it's hobby that you are observing crows is your uh, is part of your day to day uh, activity and all so you observe that all crows are uh, black uh, most of the crows are black you know so now you got up in the morning and then you observe that uh, the next crow that you observe is also turned out to be black and all here in this case it is a swan we are talking about swan so this bird is a swan and all. so therefore uh, this bird has to be white and all most swans are white this bird is a swan then it has to be uh, this is probably be white and all so it may happen that uh, the bird that you come across the next bird that you are going to see the swan may be uh, black also so on every single morning in the human history the sun appear to rise and all so therefore we say that usually we say that sun sun will also appear to rise uh, tomorrow morning in the east of it. so based on our repeated observations and all usually we infer that we predict something and we say that uh, let us say thousands of instances uh, you observed where you know, sun rose in the uh, rose in the east and then based on that information you will say that sun will also rise uh, in the east maybe even tomorrow morning also 
so there is no uh, such kind of uh, absolute necessity involved in these kinds of arguments and all. So before going into the details of what kind of uh, things are inductive and what kind of things are deductive arguments let me uh, talk about the distinction between the deductive and inductive argument in a uh, better way. So, so here is the these are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves to judge whether a given argument is a deductive or inductive argument. So the first question we uh, need to ask this is the case of uh, deduction and on the other hand we have induction. So these are the two different kinds of reasoning that uh, you come across in uh, day to day discourse. So the first thing which you need to uh, note is this that whether that the conclusion conclusion contains contains some information uh, conclusion contains some some information that is not in premises that is not in premises. So now the first question that you need to ask yourself is this that is it the case that the conclusion contains some information that is not in the premises and all. So depending upon uh, uh, the answer we can say that it is a deduction or it is an induction and all. In the case of uh, deductive arguments the answer is uh, the answer is no and in the case of uh, inductive arguments the answer is yes. So what it says is this that uh, if you observe the argument uh, in greater detail then what we will see is, is that if you ask this question whether the conclusion contains some information which is uh, some information that is not in the premises then in the case of deductive arguments it is not the case but in the case of uh, inductive arguments it is the case. For example if you say all men are mortal Socrates is man Socrates is mortal there is absolutely there is no new information in the conclusion uh, Socrates is mortal for example if you say uh, this is the common example which uh, everyone gives all men are mortal Socrates is man Socrates is man something like that then you say that Socrates is mortal. So now observe this uh, kind of argument this is a deductive argument and now we need to ask this particular kind of question whether the conclusion contains any new information that is not there in the premises. So Socrates is mortal is already hidden in uh, all men are mortal and Socrates is man. So Socrates is mortal is made explicit in the conclusion which is already hidden in the premises and all. So there are some other uh, things uh, which come under the category of uh, deductive arguments which you usually come across in day to day discourse also. For example if you say that uh, somebody is a liar and all, uh, Ram is a liar and from that you can infer that Ram always tells uh, lies. So this is by definition that follows from uh, this thing Ram is a liar, liar means uh, that he tells, he tells lies only. So arguments based on definition or there are some kind of uh, analytical uh, truths which come under I mean uh, which, we, which I will talk about it in the examples little bit later. But in this case absolutely there is no new information uh, present in the conclusion and all. Whereas in the case of uh, inductive arguments for example uh, you say that most of the IITK students. Uh, who graduated who graduated from from so most of the students I think I just had to rub it up most of the students who graduated from IITK this institute uh, 
after let us say 2007 or something like that whosoever has graduated after this thing took uh, a course course on uh, let us say some course which is with the name PHI 142 introduction to logic. Uh, so this is the uh, first premise and all. So we are saying that most of the students who so has graduated from IITK after 2007 took this course and all. It so happened incidentally that you know most of the students uh, took this particular kind of course. Now let us say some example. Now the second premise is this is one student with the name Shaker uh, is a student of uh, a student who graduated who graduated uh, after let us say 2007. So uh, the first premise is that most of the students who graduated from IITK uh, uh, from uh, after 2007 it so happened that they took this introduction to logic course. Now Shaker is a student who graduated after 2007 so then, then you say that probably uh, Shaker took, took a course in in logic. So this is the conclusion uh, which follows from these two premises and it appears to be the case that it is a strong argument conclusion seems to be probably following from the premises because most of the students who graduated let us say you know 90, 90 percent of the students who graduated uh, from ITK after 2007 and took the course in logic and not 90 90 percent of the students in every batch. So now Shaker has graduated let us say in 2008 or something like that then probably Shaker also would have taken this particular kind of course in logic. You need to note that the conclusion only probably follows from the premises and all. It might be the case that Shaker might not have taken this particular kind of course. He might not have fallen under the category of most of the students. So suppose if you convert this argument uh, you reinterpret this argument in a different way for example if you say that all the students who graduated in IITK after 2007 took a course uh, graduated took a course in PHI 142 and it so happened that PHI 142 is uh, compulsory or something like that every student must do and all then this argument may turn out to be the case that you know uh, Shaker also took the took a course in logic and all but in this case the way this argument is interpreted the conclusion only probably follows from the premises and all. So now again coming back to this our uh, fun initial question that whether the conclusion contains some information that is not in the premises definitely it is not a, uh, there is certain kind of information which is not present in the uh, uh, premises and then uh, what we are trying to do is is that the conclusion probably Shaker also took course in logic seems to be going beyond what is stated in the premises and all. So the idea here is this that whether or not the conclusion contains some information which is not there uh, in the premises if the answer is no then it is a deductive argument because there is no absolutely there is no new information in the conclusion. In the case of inductive arguments uh, uh, the conclusion contains some information which is not there in the premises and all. So one example another example of an inductive argument could be is that all of us uh, travel in commercial flights and all Indigo, uh, Air India etc all these things to different places then it so happened that you know 99.99 percent it is not 100 percent and all 99.99 percent of commercial airline flights uh, uh, completed have completed without any incident and all. It so happened that they landed safely and all. So based on that uh, kind of uh, premise you can infer that uh, the next plane that you are going to take from Lucknow airport or something like that will all will almost certainly arrive safely and all. So it is there is no guarantee that it 100 percent it will 
land safely and although our information our uh, uh, we have trust in our uh, safety of our uh, public safety etc of uh, flights etc and all even then you can you cannot under, uh, you cannot say with 100 percent certainty that the next flight that you are going to take will also land safely you know it might be the case that you know there is some technical problem or uh, something might uh, wrong might happen in the engine etc so many things might happen you know. So in that case also the conclusion uh, goes beyond what is stated in the premises and all there is no absolute certainty involved in these kinds of argument. So the other important feature that distinguishes inductive and deductive argument is the next question that uh, you need to ask is and based on whether your answer is yes or no then that is going to decide whether it is a deduction or induction. So now the next question that you need to ask is is it truth preserving is your argument truth preserving. So deductive arguments preserves the truth one of the definitions of valid deductive argument is this that if the premises are true the conclusion cannot be false and all that means it is preserving the truth and all. So if the premises are true the conclusion must be true and all that means the truth is preserved throughout the argument and all. So one example is all men are mortal Socrates is man Socrates is mortal and all you will be bored by this example but in the classic textbooks this is the example which everyone gives and all. So in that particular kind of example all men are mortal if it is assumed to be true Socrates is man is true then Socrates has uh, must be true and all that is what is called as truth preserving kind of argument. So the answer for this question uh, is yes then it is a deductive argument if it is not truth preserving then it is called as inductive argument what does it mean if the con uh, in the case of inductive arguments. Uh, the conclusion only probably follow from the premises that means you can come up with an instance where your premises are true but your conclusion can be probably false now. So in most of the cases it might happen your observations etc tells us that the next thing that you are going to predict is also true and all but there is no absolute guarantee that you know your conclusion is true and all but that is not the case in the case of uh, arguments that you commonly come across in the case of in the field of mathematics etc. If something is true then it has to be absolutely true and all in mathematics we do not say that uh, the premises are 90 percent true or 70 percent true etc and all once you accept that something is true and that is absolutely true certainly true etc and all. So this is the reason why you know if mathematics does not strive for some kind of certainty then other fields uh, I mean we do not uh, have anything to say about other fields you know. So mathematics definitely uh, seek some kind of certainty and all. So this is a kind of ideal kind of situation uh, the ideals which we want to achieve now in day to day life. So the question is whether do we come across these kinds of argument in day to day discourse or not you have to be a little bit patient so that you will uh, come to know about these things uh, a little bit later. So truth preserving then the answer is yes in the case of induction the answer is no. Now the third one is is the argument is having some kind of variable strength uh, so these are the questions and all the answer will be like this uh, in the case of uh, uh, deductive arguments it is no and in the case of inductive argument it is yes that means conclusion is accepted with some degree of truth and all. So since in the case of inductive arguments conclusion need not necessarily follow from the premises conclusion only probably follow from the premises then uh, it is having some kind of variable strength and all. So this is not permitted in the case of deduct, uh, deductive arguments uh, conclusion necessarily follows from the premises there is no uh, kind of uh, variable strength uh, which you will come across in the case of uh, uh, deductive arguments. The answer here is no the answer here is yes and no. is the argument is having some kind of variable strength if you ask yourself this question if your answer is no then that is a deductive argument if your answer is yes then it is an inductive argument and the one of the another final thing which you need to 
note is this thing is it an open ended argument or not open ended argument or not. So, if your answer is that means additional premises can weaken or strengthen the argument open in the sense that you know uh, if the argument is closed then uh, additional uh, premises will not invalidate the conclusions that you have drawn earlier. If it is an open ended argument then uh, then uh, addition of new premises uh, will weaken or strengthen the argument. So, in the case of deductive arguments the answer is no suppose if you ask yourself is this the case that your argument is an open ended argument that means addition of new premises or new information we can or strengthen the conclusion that you have drawn earlier then the answer clear cut answer in the case of deductive argument is no in the case of inductive arguments the answer is yes. So, that means inductive arguments are open ended kind of arguments. So, this is the main uh, distinction between uh, uh, the deductive and inductive arguments. So, in a uh, nutshell it is like this that uh, in the case of in deductive arguments the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises there is no new information in the conclusion which is not stated in the premises. Suppose if it is uh, something uh, some new information is present in the conclusion then uh, that means the uh, whatever is stated in the conclusion goes beyond whatever stated in the premises and all that means it is not a deductive kind of argument and then the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises that means your premises are true the conclusion cannot be false and then uh, it is not an open ended kind of argument it is logically closed that means even if you add thousands of premises etc and all suppose if you have derived some kind of conclusion that is not going to violate. Uh, the conclusions that you have derived earlier and all. So, usually you will find these kinds of arguments in, uh, in a specific uh, form of uh, reasoning and all that is mathematical kind of reasoning we employ this deductive arguments. Uh, you might ask where if suppose if the conclusion nothing is new nothing new is stated in the conclusion what is so great about this deductive arguments and all. Now, one of the strengths of a deductive argument is, is that you know you will achieve some kind of certainty and and then uh, directive arguments does not have any variable strength once you accept it you accept it as 100 percent true even the conclusion is also 100 percent true and absolutely true etcetera. There is no way in which you can say that the conclusion is 90 percent true or 70 percent true etcetera and all. So, in the case of inductive arguments the conclusion probably follows from the premises and uh, no uh, there is a new 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 information in the premises that means you know especially when in the case of uh, when you are predicting something you will go beyond what is stated in the premises and all. So, based on today's weather you can infer some of the other things and all. So, predictions weather predictions etcetera they are all arguments which come under the category of inductive arguments which I will talk about a little bit later. So, inductive arguments are uh, open ended arguments in the sense that you keep on adding new information then it will weaken or strengthen the argument and all. For example, if you say that uh, let us say 75 percent of the commercial airlines airline flights completed without incident and all the next plane you will take is almost certainly arrive safely and all if this percentage of safety increases and all then you are strengthening this particular kind of argument and all. Let us say now you, you went from 75 to 99.99 percent and all means that you are increasing the strength of the argument and all. So, uh, now we spoke about uh, the distinction between inductive and deductive arguments and then we need to look into uh, uh, this aspect that where do we come across this inductive arguments. Just like in the case of uh, arguments where you know first you need to identify premises and for identifying the premises you need to have premise indicators in the case of conclusion indicator in the, in the case of identifying the conclusion you need to have conclusion indicators suppose if these two are missing then you need to find out whether there is any inferential claim present in the passage it can be factual or inferential claim. Uh, if one of these things are present then you say that is an argument present in the English language passage and all. So, our English language passage is crowded with uh, 
clouded with all these kinds of things and all arguments non arguments etc. So now once you identify that uh, this is an argument then the next question arises is what kind of argument it is let us say you have identified that it is an inductive argument usually inductive arguments um, you have to look for the indicator words. So in the argument in an argument you will find these kinds of phrases then you can say that seems to be some kind of inductive argument present in a English language passage probably less likely or more likely or reasonable plausible all these things are the phrases which you commonly see in inductive arguments. And uh, other kinds of arguments that you commonly come across in day to day discourse are these things statistical data once you are uh, trying to come up with uh, once you come up with the statistical data you will interpret it uh, and you will say with uh, some kind of certainty some kind of uh, uh, degree uh, you will make some kind of claims etc and all probably 90 percent uh, uh, of IIT case students are bright or something like that some data you will infer some of the things are generalizations from past experience in the past sun always uh, risen in the east so now you will say with uh, uh, this thing with, uh, with confidence that sun also rises in the east even today also or you observed all the crows to be uh, most of the crows to be black and all the next crow that you are going to observe is also turned out to be black uh, appeals appeal to signs evidence based on evidence authority uh, most of the cases you know causal relationships come under the category of uh, inductive argument causal inferences in particular that means the reasoning from cause to effect. So these are the things which you commonly come across in day to day discourse. So now once you identify that it is an inductive argument the next question that arises is whether it is strong or weak you know. a strong inductive argument is the one in which it is probable but definitely it is not necessary that if the premises are true the conclusion is probably true you know. A weak inductive argument is the one in which it is not probable that if the premises are true the conclusion is true and all conclusion may probably be false and all we will talk about uh, this particular kind of distinction little bit later and once you identify that it is a weak or strong inductive argument a strong inductive argument can be a cogent argument first it, it so happened that all the premises are probably true then it is called as a pro cogent argument it so happens that one of the premises is probably false then it is called as an uncogent argument this is the main there are the main differences which you came across uh, uh, while distinguishing uh, deductive and inductive arguments the main difference lies in the sort of relationship the other or expositor of the argument takes there to be between the premises and the conclusion the relationship between the conclusion and premises if it is necessary that is a deductive argument it is probable then it is the inductive argument if the other arg author of the argument believes that the truth of the premises definitely establishes the truth of the conclusion due to some kind of definition logical entailment or mathematical necessity and so on and so forth then it is called as a deductive argument. So we will talk about uh, where do we come across this deductive arguments in a while from now uh, and even inductive arguments also the third distinction is this that if the author of the argument does not think that the truth of the premises definitely establishes the truth of the conclusion that means the conclusion only probably follows from the premises but nonetheless believes that the truth provides good reason to believe that the conclusion is true then the argument is inductive. So an inductive argument the fourth distinction is this that an inductive argument expresses an inference in which the conclusion goes beyond what is implicit in the premises there is new information in the conclusion this is what we have already uh, talked about in uh, the last uh, few slides a valid deductive argument is a one in which the conclusion can be inferred merely by unpacking what is already stated in the premises uh, whatever is already implicit in the premises you are trying to make it explicit. So here is an, a very interesting story uh, which is uh, formulated by Bertrand Russell the great philosopher and mathematician and all he shows an instance of uh, uh, his uh, inductivist turkey this is an example so the story goes like this imagine a situation where your turkey is there turkey is a kind of uh, it looks like hen and all so the turkey found that on his first morning at the turkey farm he was fed at 9 am and all so the turkey is experiencing uh, that you know his master is every day is feeding this turkey 
uh, at 9 am and all is giving breakfast something or other. However being a good inductivist the turkey did not jump to the conclusion uh, because if he is a good inductivist there is no guarantee that um, the next day also he will give the uh, give this give food at, at 9 am and all he waited until he had collected large number of observations of the fact that he has that he was fed at 9 am and all. So if you want to make your inductive argument little bit strong and all uh, then your uh, sample size etc should be large enough and all. So you have repeatedly observed for so many cases and all then you know your, your argument will become strong and all. Suppose with two instances you cannot say that uh, something is good or bad and all but you know you have to repetitively observe some of the instances and all but it is very difficult to come up with uh, uh, what constitutes uh, uh, a sound argument etc and all. Is it 90 percent is enough, 50 percent is enough, or 40 percent is enough all depends upon very subjective kind of things. So here in this case in this story the turkey was fed at 9 am every day and he has collected large number of observations every day he was fed at 9 am only and he made this observations under a wide variety of circumstances etc. It is not enough that you know under various circumstances his master fed him uh, at 9 am only despite the fact that you know uh, he is busy or maybe it raining all kinds of situations circumstances and all his food uh, he did not miss his uh, food and all turkey and he made those observations under wide variety of circumstances these are the important things for a good inductive argument and all on Wednesdays, Thursdays and warm days and even cold days etc and all and in fact even in the rainy days and even the dry days also. It so happened that he was fed at 9 am only sharp his master was so good that he fed him uh, at 9 am only. Each day he added another observational statement to his list and all is strengthening his, uh, his argument based on his observations and all. So finally his inductivist conscience was satisfied and then he carried out an inductive inference to conclude that I am always fed at 9 am and all. So this is what you know even the most of the scientists will also do and all when they are trying to come up with some kind of uh, uh, inferring uh, conclusions and all then they will base their experiments uh, thousands of experiments they will uh, do and then once they are convinced and satisfied with uh, so many experiments etc and all they will infer some of the things and all. they conclude something. So in this case the turkey uh, concluded uh, that you know, repeated observations he was fed at 9 am Thursdays warm day cold day all days he was fed up at 9 am only. So at la last this con uh, so now he came to the conclusion that I am always fed at 9 am only. So based on the repeated observations is a story is a story and all. So turkey came to this conclusion that you know I am going to be fed at 9 am even tomorrow also. So this conclusion was shown to be false in no uncertain uh, manner when let us say in one fine Christmas eve and all instead of being fed at 9 am and all it is he had his throne cut and all. So the uh, I mean uh, several days etc and all he was fed at 9 am and all that does not give us guarantee that he is going to be fed the next day also. It so happened that in on a fine Christmas eve and all his master took him for uh, this thing he had cut his throat and all. So poor inductivist uh, turkey uh, what he has to do is the question and all. Despite his repeated uh, um, observations and then you need to see that under wide variety of circumstances etc based on all this information etc and all he came to this particular kind of company there is nothing wrong with uh, the inductivist turkey. But this argument shows that the argument that uh, the turkey has come up with I am going to be fed at 9 am based on all the repeated observations etc. Uh, this, this conclusion is shown to be false An inductivist inference with two premises had led to this false kind of conclusion. This is what is stated in uh, David Chalmers book what is what is this thing called science. So what does it what does this story tells us? is simply this that despite you know you have various uh, I mean you have evidence and your gut feeling says that that is going to be the case and all in the case of inductive arguments there is no guarantee that your conclusion necessarily follows from the premises. This is different in the case of deductive arguments if the conclusions 
uh, are true uh, premises are true the conclusion cannot be false you know. So this is uh, uh, this story tells us that uh, uh, in, in the case of induction the conclusion probably follows from the premises and then despite all the evidence etc and all we cannot justify that uh, this uh, uh, inductive argument is justified and all. So we will talk about this particular kind of story little bit later but uh, in this particular kind of course we will be mainly focusing our attention on the deduction part so basically you know we will not talk much about the induction so basically we are trying to capture some kind of mathematical reasoning which can be done with the help of deduction. So where do we come across deductive arguments so uh, deductive arguments uh, usually you will come across uh, in mathematics etc and all um, and whenever you come across some kind of valid forms which I talked about uh, in the last uh, class uh, a valid form is considered to be a, a valid uh, kind of argument if the argument is uh, having a valid form then that particular kind of argument is valid if it is having invalid form then it is called as an invalid kind of argument. So uh, in this uh, lecture what I spoke about uh, is like this first we uh, identified the R, uh, once we recognizing uh, recognize the arguments and all the next question that comes to us is what type of argument it is then we asked some set of questions with which uh, uh, depending upon whether our answer is yes or no we classified the argument into deductive or inductive argument so uh, there is one thing which is uh, which I missed it out uh, usually this is the mistake which we commonly uh, traditionally speaking uh, this is the case a deductive argument is a one in which you know we move from um, particulars to general whereas in the case of uh, um, inductive arguments we move from general to particular and all. Uh, but that definition will not serve us uh, well and all because we can we can have particular arguments but uh, you can still have a general uh, kind of uh, conclusion now. So there are some kind of deductive arguments we move from particulars to general also where there are some there may be some inductive arguments which we move from de, uh, partic general to particular also. So these are some of the problems which we commonly encounter so this is not a appropriate definition and all what is important here is uh, this that is it truth preserving uh, whether the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises or is there any uh, argument is having variable strength these are some of the important questions that we need to ask to judge whether it is an inductive argument or deductive argument usually inductive arguments which you come across uh, in the arguments of science predictions etc and all which we will talk about it in detail a little bit later and deductive arguments are the ones which you will find it in the arguments of mathematics uh, etc or sometimes you come across some kind of valid forms which I am going to talk about in the next lecture. So, so these are some of the important distinctions between uh, the deductive and inductive arguments and in the next lecture what we are going to talk about is uh, where do we come across this deductive and inductive arguments what is the significance of this deductive and inductive arguments and then we also talk about uh, whether a deductive argument is when do you say that a deductive argument is valid when do we say that deductive argument is invalid is there any method with which you can judge whether the argument is uh, valid or invalid uh, uh, in the case of inductive arguments if the argument is uh, whether the argument is strong or weak how do we judge these things and once it is strong or weak whether it is a cogent argument or uncogent argument these are the questions that we are going to answer in the next lecture.